Hi, welcome to this festive series where we're going to be creating some snow in Unreal Engine 4 and it's going to be brilliant and you're going to be able to make snow angels and the like. Not really, but stick around for this video if you want to see how to make a good looking particle system. Okay, so the first things first is that we need to create some materials for the snow. So in the example I showed you, I had four materials and one texture. Now two of the materials we're using just a simple circle that will be created just using some of the available nodes in the material editor and the other one was just using a simple snowflake texture which I'll have a link available too. So we're just going to create those for now. So the first one we're going to create is we're going to create our simple snow particle, our simple snow circle. So we're going to create a new material and I'm going to name this snow particle and we're going to have one named lit and use M for material. Now we're going to have two instances of this snow particle. We're going to have one that's lit and one that is not lit. And I will show you why. So double click this to open it and just dock it to the tab up at the top. And first off, change its blend mode to translucent and leave its shading model at lit. And I found that using two sided can sometimes help as we'll be using it for a particle system. So now we want to create our circle. So we get a node named radial gradient exponential and place this into our base color and our opacity. And then we want to hold S and left click to get a scalar parameter, which we're going to name emissive and give it a default value of 1. And we're going to need some variables for our generation of the sphere. So we're going to need the first one, which we're going to name radius. And surprise, surprise, this is going to be the radius of the circle. And we're going to give it a default value of around 0.5. And then we're going to want another one, and it's going to be density. And this is going to be the density of the circle. And it's going to have a value of 5, because I think that works really well. Center position, leave that as, as it is, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, so that's in the middle of the plane. And then UVs, we don't have any UVs, we're just using a simple plane because it's a sprite. So we can leave those for now. So now we have our simple snow system. And we're going to leave it as this for now, but we are going to make some changes to this in the future to make it a bit better. But for this video, we'll be creating our simple snow. So what we can do is we can now duplicate this. And instead of calling it lit2, we're going to call it unlit. Because this is the one that's not going to actually be affected by light. And sometimes it helps when you don't make a typo. So, in this, we don't have to change anything except change its shading model to unlit. So this will not be affected by the light. And then we need another material, which is going to be for our very pretty snowflake. And we'll start with our lit material. And double click this to open it. But wait, we need our texture. So, open the folder where you're going to download this texture to. And it's just a simple snowflake. As you see, it's a white snowflake on a black background to give it an alpha, drag this into our folder and now in our snowflake material we can use a texture sample and we'll choose our snowflake. Blend mode to translucent and leave its shading model as lit and make it two sided. Again we're going to want a scalar parameter for our emission and we'll leave it at 1 and use our texture sample for our base color if we could just drag off that, thank you and its opacity and I'm just going to wait for it to compile and there you go, that's our snowflake as it's two sided it can be on either side duplicate this instance well, it's not an instance, I used incorrect terminology, but shh, it's okay. 
and change shading model to unlit when you've got the unlit version. Now we need to make the particle system. So right click and create particle system and double click it to open. Now I know this is quite a scary looking window, it's like oh my god there is a lot on here. And you're right, there is a lot on here. But for the most part we're not going to be touching a lot of it. So you can just ignore it. First off, left click this particle emitter plane here and change this to snow particle lit and click on this required and choose your snow particle lit material. Go to its lifetime and we want a decent length lifetime which depends on really where you're having your snow spawn in but a good one to give it is probably maximum about 10 seconds, minimum about 5. Okay. Now, our materials compiled here and as you can see we've got this snow that's going up so it's wrong and it's coming from one point and it's really not looking very snow-like. Not what we want. So, first off we need to right click and click new GPU sprites because we want this to render on the GPU and not the CPU. Second of all, initial size. I'm just going to give you some values that works really well for me. We can have 2000 by 2000 and a Z of 50. Whoops, wrong thing. No, put that down to 10, 10, 10, and then on the bottom for minimum, 5, 5, 5. And this just gives us a range of the size of our snow particles because obviously snow is not all the same size and then we want location initial location left click on it and this is where we put in our 2000 we really didn't want that big snow and for the z we want 50 and then in the minimum we want minus 2000 minus 2000 and 50 so this gives us an area of where the snow will now spawn in because we're using a coordinate system. So it can go to 2000 and minus 2000 in the X, 2000 and minus 2000 in the Y, and then we've got this little space between 50 and minus 50 in the Z. The issue here is the snow is still rising. That's Again, it's not how snow works. So change your velocity to about 100 and 100 in the X and Y. And then we're going to give it a value of about minus 500. You might think that's a bit fast, and that's fair enough. You can change that if you want. Then in the bottom, we have, surprise, surprise, minus 100, minus 100, and then minus again, 250, because the Z velocity always has to be minus, so the snow is going down. But these X and Y values allows the snow to sort of move in zigzag patterns and just intersect with each other. So you can have this as big as you like, really, 200, 200, minus 200, minus 200, just sort of make sure they can move in an even pattern. And that gives it, like, as you can see these particles here, they're going this way, they're going that way, they're going all over, and it looks a bit more realistic and a bit better. Go to spawn, and we want more. This isn't enough. You can have as many as you want, you could have 50,000 which looks pretty good for a snowstorm but they're all of the one particle so we don't want that, we want 5000, 5000 works pretty well because we're going to be adding more sprites to this and already you can see we've got this quite good looking snow cloud now we've done a lot of work on this and we need to do some more so we're going to do collision and we're going to kill it not stop it, kill it so the particles just disappear when they collide with anything in the environment and then a rotation initial rotation, give it anywhere between minimum and maximum of 10, a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 10, and then rotation rate, let it rotate between 0 and 1 degrees. And that just allows it to rotate as it's falling, again it giving a better impression. And I'm just going to put the collision at the bottom here because that's sort of its end game. Now I'm going to just go on this emitter and click duplicate duplicate, duplicate, because we're having four. 
And on the top here, we're going to change this snow particle to snow particle unlit and change its required to change its material to snow particle unlit and then snow particle lit here. We're going to change to our snowflake. So we're going to change its name to snowflake. And on this one, we want snowflake unlit. And we'll change its required to snowflake unlit. And now, in between with all these, we have our snowflakes. So, we also want to set a size for these. And I think we're just going to make them slightly bigger between 15 and 5. Because your snowflakes generally are a little bigger. Now, as you can see, we have this. Warning, this particle system has no fixed bounding box and contains a GPU emitter. What does that mean? Well, it just means we need to go to this bounds arrow here and set fixed bounds. So I'm going to restart it and then I'm just going to drag it into our level. So I'm just going to bring it into here and use the Z axes to bring it up. And when I click play, you can see our snow is falling all around us. And as you can see, this is our snow particle system. If we use the console command stat frames per second, you can see that it's making absolutely no difference to our current frame rate. And it's falling from the sky pretty well. Now again, that mess up there is just from its motion blur. You could turn motion blur off if you want. We're actually going to edit this in the next video so it looks a bit better and its motion blur depends on its speed. So I hope you enjoyed this video so far, give a like if you did, a dislike if you didn't, if your opinions are complicated or they are otherwise, just leave it in the comments down below, as well if you have any comments, questions, suggestions or advice, leave them down there, I'll get back to you as soon as possible, and as always, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more, I'll see you in the next video guys, thank you, bye.